Hey, Benji Lutheran Church, this is Pastor Dane, and here I am coming to you on Earth Day from the comfort of my own backyard. And I thought, what better place for us to have this sermon today than uh, outside in nature? Uh, so today we're going to be doing that, and I'm also going to be reading to you my favorite psalm, Psalm 8, and it's a song about creation. Uh, so here is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth! You made your glory higher than heaven. From the mouths of nursing babies you have laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers have made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? And yet, you've made them only slightly less than God, crowning them with glory and honor. You've let them rule over the works of your hands. You have put everything under their feet, all sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth? So I asked this question a while back to many people at Vinci Lutheran Church. Where do you find God in the world? And as you would expect, there were many different answers to that question. Some talked about finding God in the laughter of children. Others talked about finding God in a random phone call from a friend you hadn't heard from in years. But the universal answer that almost everyone could agree upon is that it was easy for them to find God in nature. There's very, something very interesting about that to me. We tend to, you know, study the Bible a lot in church, and we spend a lot of time talking about God inside church buildings. And there are reasons we do that. But someone once told me that the greatest blasphemy we can commit is to construct a building, even a holy church, like we have at Vinji, and say that this is the place where God lives. The reality is that God's sanctuary is this whole creation we call home. If we go outside, it's not hard to see it here. We often find God and experience God right here out in the world. God is as close as the birds of the air. You can hear them singing right now. God is as close as the leaves on the trees that are just starting to bud. God is as close as us gazing up at the stars of night and feeling the sunshine on our face and imagining that each of these things is a gift and a sign that there is a God who cared enough to create it all and God still has enough love to care for each one of us. So today on Earth Day, we stop and we take a breath and we thank God for this beautiful planet we call home. We take a step outside and we breathe in the smells of spring that are taking over and we pause to let that sunshine wash over us and we listen to the sound of the wind and those birds of the air and we give thanks to God for giving us these gifts of life. But we also pause a minute and remember our responsibility to this planet. As we read in our psalm today, God has given us a special place in this creation, a place of honor just a little lower than God. God has given us dominion over the work of God's hands. And at first glance, we might think that allows us to do whatever we want with this planet. But as we think about it, this is both an awesome gift and an awesome responsibility God has handed over to us. We are placed right here to care for this place we call home. We're placed here to tend to the fields, to care for this creation in the same way God tends to us. What does it mean that God asks us to be responsible for every living thing, from the smallest shrub to the greatest whale? to care with our own hands for the works of God's hands? What does it mean for you and me to care for creation just as God cares for us? One of my favorite stories comes from 
Bishop Michael Curry, who's the bishop of the Episcopal Church in America. He says when he was just a boy, his mother said something very profound to him when he was messing around one day. She said, you know, Michael, God didn't just put you on this earth to consume the oxygen. Michael says that at the time, he didn't really think much of that comment. He supposed that it was just his mom telling him to get off his lazy butt and do something productive that day. But over the years, he's realized that there was some profound wisdom in these words from his mother. Think about it, he says. The entire animal kingdom, including us humans, we breathe in the oxygen. And what do we exhale? Carbon dioxide. Now think about the entirety of all the plants on the earth. What do they breathe in? They breathe in that carbon dioxide we've been breathing out, and they breathe out the oxygen that you and I breathe in. My Lord, it's not an accident. It's so simple, but really powerful when you think about it. The simplest yet most profound thing we can teach one another is, says Michael, that we were put on this earth not just to consume things, but to give our life for the life of the world. We were created so that we can breathe life into the creation that God has entrusted into our care. And in the same way that creation is made for you and me, it is made to care for us, to breathe into us the very breath of life. The whole earth, therefore, is made for relationship with one another. And if you can't see the divine work of God in that pattern, and you just aren't looking for God in the right places. As we look around us this day, we see the handiwork of God in this creation. We see the beauty of this creation that God has entrusted to our care, and we take time to enjoy it this Earth Day. But we also take time to remember that God has given us a special calling as children of God God has called us to care for this beautiful earth that God has made. Enjoy it, God says, tend to it, nurture it, and treat this beautiful blue planet like the precious gift that it is. As you think about the awesome gifts God has given you in this earth that we call home, I'd like to allow you the space to pause for a minute and transport yourself to another setting from where you are now. This time, rather than the beautiful lakes and prairies and trees that we find out in west, southwestern Minnesota, I invite you to imagine the picture of a beautiful beach somewhere where the tides are gently crashing in on a beautiful sunny day. One day, an old man is walking along this beach, and it's littered with hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of starfish that have been washed ashore by the high tide. As the man walks along, he comes upon a young girl who's eagerly throwing the starfish back into the ocean one by one. Puzzled, the man looks at the girl and asks her what she's doing. Without looking up from her task, she says to him, I'm saving the starfish. He says, you're saving the starfish? There are so many. And there's just one little old you. What difference are you going to make? The little girl gently tossed another starfish into the ocean. And then she looked up at this man and she said, I just made a difference to that one. This Earth Day, I encourage you to enjoy the gifts of God's good creation. I encourage you to take a moment, if you haven't already, and step outside and breathe in the gift of life that God has given you. But then take a moment and remember that it is your call to care for this world that we all call home. I invite you to find whatever your little starfish is today, to think about the little plants and the creatures and this earth that God has entrusted to your care, then use your hands to care for this earth that God created with God's own hands. 
Indeed, today we all remember our calling. And we remember the words of this psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen.